Five Live. A notice of intended prosecution is yet to be served on the driver of a Silva's bus involved in a deadly road traffic accident on Tuesday. A closer look at road safety following a collision that claimed the lives of three men, including the chairman of Crooked Tree Village on Tuesday. And where are we with the 2022 census? These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. Great Belize Productions Channel 5, proud winner of nine Caribbean Media Awards for 2021. Best Investigative Report, Best News Item, Best Coverage of People with Disabilities, Best Financial Literacy Journalism, Best Videographer, Best Television Commercial Spot, and the People's Choice Award, with two special mentions for Financial Literacy Journalism. including our elderly, needs to stay connected with their loved ones. With SMART's Golden Citizen Broadband Program, senior citizens can sign up for 10 megabytes of unlimited internet at a low monthly cost of $25. Citizens over 65 can sign up with a valid ID and receive free installation plus one month free on selected broadband plans. Visit a Smart Showroom near you for more information on how you can enjoy Smart's Golden Citizen Broadband Program. Smart, bringing people together. Welcome to Design Depot. All in one place. Shop brands you know and trust, like Kohler, Welcome, GE Appliances. Welcome, Oran Windows. Welcome, Tiles from around the world. Welcome, Sherwin Williams Paint and Coating. Visit us today at Mile Three on the Philip Golden Highway, or call us at 223-3768. Design Depot, all in one place. Say hello to DigiTV. Step into the world of digital entertainment. DigiTV gives you access to 100 plus channels on your TV or your mobile device at unbeatable prices. Take your shows with you wherever you go. It's a new level of freedom. Enjoy your favorite entertainment, sports, 
family, Latin, and local channels. No more fighting for the TV remote. You can access whenever you want from two devices at the same time. DigiTV is for everyone. And with the fastest fiber and mobile networks in the country, you are guaranteed to have the best experience ever. There's no installation required. Sign up for the Max Package for only $40 monthly and get the first two months for just $30. For a limited time, get 50% off a Fire Stick when you sign up. Download the DigiTV app from the Android or Apple stores. Just WhatsApp us at 608-8888 to sign up. It's that easy. Watch, experience, enjoy DigiTV today. Babe, have you seen the advisory that Nemo just posted? There's going to be a storm. Storm? It's not a storm. That's just a little rain. We'll be all right. Thank goodness that was only a simulation. But what if it wasn't? Consider this. You've worked hard building your future. Your family, your business, your home. RFNG Insurance has policy options that can protect your most valued assets so that you can focus on what matters most. Include RFNG Insurance in your hurricane prep Remember, it pays to get it right with RFNG Insurance, a road group company. Bank Limited. Our country, your bank. Good evening and welcome to News 5 Live for September 28th. I am Sabrina Daly. The families of three men who lost their lives in a deadly head-on collision on the Philip Gosen Highway on Tuesday morning are still reeling from the tragic road traffic accident. As we reported, a commuter bus traveling in the direction of Orange Walk crashed into a pickup truck driven by 59-year-old James Dawson. Traveling with him were Brandon Gillett and Eustace Dawson Jr. The men were en route to Belmopan, where they were scheduled to meet with Belize Rural North Area Representative Marconi Leal Sr. at the Lands Department. Dawson and Gillett, the recently elected chairman of Crooked Tree Village, died on impact while Eustace Dawson Jr. had to be freed from the mangled wreck using the jaws of life. Police investigations reveal that sometime around 8.15 a.m., a Silva's bus driven at the time by 21-year-old Joel Desus of Guinea Grass Village were traveling north. Upon reaching near mile 17, a vehicle suddenly stopped in front of him. He swerved to the left of the road where he collided with a pickup truck. At the scene of the accident, News 5 spoke with a passenger on board the Silvis bus. He told us that a, that a taxi suddenly stopped on the highway to discharge a passenger. The taxi stopped in front of us, right? Yeah, man. To take off some people right in front of us, but then, like, it, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a sudden stop, right? So the bedroom, he could not stop at the time being. So what he got to do is haul on the next side. But now, when we hold on the next side, now we see other, other, other car coming, right? Which is not one. Which is, which, which. And now, the driver from the bus now, he, he, cut off, he cut off the road, right? But at the same time now, the car, which was coming opposite direction, did the same thing. Cut, cut off into us, you know? 
So the, the pickup truck cut off in turn or turn? Yeah. You, see, you know, he, 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 we was the one who, who come off first, right? Mm -hmm. He he, he stayed, stayed on the road, man. So? You know? yeah, that, if, he, if he stayed on the road, cars, yo, like, maybe he got jumping up. That's the, that was the reason why he went, he, he found us, no? And let's talk about the impact. It was obvious that all. Uh, it's bad. You could see it bad. Three persons died. It's really rough, man. It's really rough. I'm sorry for them, man. But man, just life. You know, when when you're in this terrible country, the, your, your mind is not picking too well. But my driver, the driver, was 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 very focused, right? Mm -hmm. Very focused on what was happening. Cause as, as you see, you see, you see the car. He immediately go on the next side, or he immediately run off the road, man. Okay. Immediately run off the road. Anybody from the bus got hurt? Um, just the bus, the bus driver and the girl got a couple of Yeah. And, and the conductor, man. For you, how was the experience? Man, I was, I was, I was just waking up. I like, yo, the experience was like, yo, something bad happened to me same way too, man. Mm. Like, yo. You were traveling from the city to where? I was, I was going, I was going to, um, Orange Rock, no? The Statistical Institute of Belize today held its third press conference for this year and presented GDP estimates for the second quarter of 2022, as well as the Consumer Price Index and external trade statistics for the first eight months of the year. Also shared were the estimates of the annual gross domestic product for 2021. News 5's Dwayne Moody was there and files this report. Good news coming out of the Statistical Institute of Belize is that the economy improved by 13.5% in the second quarter of 2022. Data shows that between the months of April and June of this year, the value of goods and services produced locally was $1.315 billion, up by $156.9 million when compared to the same period in 2021. This growth, according to statistician Christopher Hultz, was as a result of a boost in tertiary and secondary sectors. Across the three sectors for the annual, we see primary growth at 22.4%, secondary growth at 11.5%, and tertiary at 13.9%. GDP is spread across the three sectors, and this is how those sectors contributed to that GDP. So, the tertiary sector continues to be the largest part of our GDP or the biggest contributor. So if you see tertiary sector here, it's basically around 60 to 62 percent of our GDP is from the services. Right? Primary uh, is 7.8 percent, secondary is 16 percent, and tax to the GDP is 13.7 percent. So overall, we said that the, the GDP was 1.32 billion. So that means out of that 1.32 billion, tertiary contributed $821.6 million for that. So that's where we get the 62% from. Secondary, 212.3 million. Primary, 101.3 million. And then taxes at 180.6 million dollars. Between January and August of this year, the inflation rate is up significantly. Consumer prices went up by 7.4 percent in August, primarily in prices of fuel, food, LPG, and restaurant services. When comparing 2021 and 2022 figures, premium gas saw a 50 percent increase, followed by the cost of food products such as vegetable oil, watermelon, potatoes, and pigtail. Orange Walk experienced the highest cumulative inflation rate of 8.7%, while Belmopan experiencing the lowest inflation rate at 4.8% between January and August. In breaking down the Consumer Price Index, statistician Melvin Perez says that the increasing trend began in November 2020. Prices started to increase since February up to August of 2022. These increases were a combination of higher prices for food, butane, and fuel. Looking at the same period in the year of 2021, we can also see how prices increased throughout these months. 
but they were not high enough to offset the increases in the year of 2021, which is why when we compare both periods, a cumulative inflation rate of 6% was reported. Looking at the trend line, it is clearly showing us how prices has been moving throughout the years, specifically starting from November of 2020, where prices started to increase heavily up to August of 2022. As it relates to trade, imports were up by 20.8% and domestic exports were down by 44.5%. For the period of January of, to August of this year, Belize imported goods valuing $1.77 billion. This was a significant growth of 34.8% or $456.3 million. As imports increase in most commodity categories when compared to imports, of the same period of last year. Dwayne Moody for News 5. Tuesday's triple fatality has brought into sharp focus issues of road safety and driving behaviors. Reports over the past few years would suggest that traffic fatalities are among the leading causes of death worldwide, and Belize is no exception. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. Almost on a weekly basis, we report on road traffic accidents claiming the lives of persons along major highways in the country. The most recent, which occurred on the Philip Golson Highway, claimed the lives of three men, including the chairman of Crooked Tree Village. While the Belize Police Department has taken the lead in the investigation, the Ministry of Transport is concerned about the increasing number of incidents. In expressing condolences to the families, Deputy Chief Transport Officer Peter Williams says that it is a real problem. Based on the preliminary reports that I, I, I have received uh, prior to this interview, um, I can see that yes, uh, road traffic collisions um, are, are, have seen a peak, really. Um, and the truth of the matter is, oftentimes we see on the media the, the, the more um, fatal or, or the fatal collisions being reported, but that has um, not accounted for all the other minor day-to-day -day road traffic uh, um, collisions that take place, the fender benders as we would refer to them. Um, those are not uh, recorded and, and shown on the media. In the general vicinity where the accident occurred, there are numerous potholes and oftentimes drivers would veer onto the wrong side of the highway to avoid slamming into them. It's a risky practice as they may end up in the path of oncoming traffic. There is also the issue of speeding, which Williams says is among the behaviors that lead to these fatal collisions. We have been observing a trend uh, over the past few years that one of, of all the five uh, pillars of road safety, uh, two of the, the, the main pillars that we've seen uh, co contributing to, to road traffic collisions and fatalities are one, safe vehicle pillars, and two, the driver behavior pillar. Um, what does that mean? Simply put, that we have observed that drivers on the road are not taking the necessary cautions and precautions to be able to reduce uh, these fatalities on the road. Uh, many a times we find that drivers uh, refuse to adhere to the rules of the road. Uh, they still choose to speed. They still choose to overtake around curves and, um, uh, and hills and so on. Adhering to road rules is for the safety and well-being of all road users. And while the onus is on the individual driver, there are efforts made to build the capacity of enforcement units. This includes a recent intake of transport officers who have been engaged in training. The Department of Transport is trying to uh, enhance its, its capabilities. Um, and by, by such, we're trying to train our officers um, of course, with um, partnership of the Belize Police Department and other stakeholders, um, we're trying to develop that in-house capacity to ensure that um, our officers are able to, to properly deal with these matters because uh, traffic enforcement is um, comprising of a variety of things, right? It's not just to be out there and, and to want to sanction road users. Um, there's an there's a awareness element, and we often try to stress on that. The provision of equipment to facilitate both the Department of Transport and to a lesser extent the police in carrying out their enforcement of the traffic rules and regulation. And also to provide some training where it's necessary to, to help them to facilitate their, their objectives. Over the past decade, the Road Safety Project 1 focused on infrastructure development along the George Price Highway and the Hummingbird Highway. 
Project manager for the second road safety project is Zane Castillo. He says that this time around, the goal is to reduce traffic fatalities by 50%. This is the second decade actually uh, for 2021 to 2030. And the objective is to reduce traffic fatalities by 50% by the year 2030. And so every time I read or see uh, traffic incident on the highway, it makes me wonder how much farther we are from accomplishing this goal. And so we are here to try to, again, instill in the road users that it's important to abide by the traffic laws and regulations. They are not there only for the sake of being on the books, but it is there to help save lives. Dwayne Moody for News 5. Coming up, free laptops for Excelsior students from Ministry of Education. Details when we return. The process here at Double Run Water Treatment Plant, it's a 24-7 process so that we can keep up with the daily demand for the consumers. These water services test their public water systems for bacteriological quality as well as various water quality parameters. When you turn on your tap, remember, there's a lot happening behind the scenes to ensure that the water you receive is safe and good for drinking. Belize Water Services, delivering water and more. Hi, I am Ishel Sis. I attend Howard Smith Nazarene School and I am in Standard 5. Screech! And another car lies on its side, tangled in a mess of metal. Far too many families in Belize must endure the torture of losing a loved one because of careless driving. Let us stop this. Many people just drive without precautions, without thinking they say I have to get there quick, fast, and hurry. But even on those short drives, things can happen. Research shows that many people, both passengers and drivers, have a preventable debt because they did not use their seatbelt. Be buckled up so that way if anyone gets in an accident, they will most likely be safe and sound. We have several projects that we want to embark on. As you know, COVID has left a lot of needs and uh, the money is going to be used to cover several of these needs. BEL, we thank you very much for involving all the students in the projects that you have. This will uh, surely open the eyes of many students and parents. Thank you BEL for this opportunity for young riders to express themselves and win prizes. My name is Dr. Marcelo Coy, and I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist at Belize Medical Associates. Pregnant women are at risk of getting infected with the COVID-19 virus and are at higher risk to develop severe complications and illnesses. The COVID-19 vaccine is safe to use during pregnancy. All pregnant women should get vaccinated to protect themselves and their newborn. Visit any vaccination site and get vaccinated. Excuse me, sir? Yes. But how can you pay your phone? B-Box. What? 
What is B-Box? B-Box is the newest rewards program. Really? Where could you get it from? Man, check out the website bbox.bz or you could download it from the App Store. And if you still don't know, check that young lady there and she'll help you. I will surely do so. Good afternoon, miss. Can you hook me up with B-Box? It's one of four Belize City High Schools that have been selected for the Education Upliftment Program dubbed Together We Rise. Students who attend the four institutions, City Vernon, Excelsior, Maud Williams and Gwen Lazaraga High Schools are given uniforms, education, lunch and other resources free of cost to them. Today, Excelsior was the first to receive free laptops and Chromebooks for students who do not have those electronic devices. News 5's Marion Alley was there and filed this report. Through close working relations with the Ministry of Diaspora Relations and Build Belize Incorporated, the Ministry of Education has been able to hand over 54 laptops and Chromebooks to Excelsior High School. They will be given to students who do not have gadgets of their own to study or to complete their assignments. We wanted to come here to Excelsior this morning to make sure that we send a very clear message to these young people um, that they are important, that their education is important, uh, that we believe in them, that we want to support them, and we want to equip them with the tools they need uh, to be successful students. Excelsior, like the other three schools involved in the education upliftment program dubbed Together We Rise, caters to students who come from poor socioeconomic backgrounds. So prior to now, each student was given a laptop. But while new devices will be distributed to all 109 students again, the school's principal, Don Waters, says today the priority was given to the 54 whose first devices are no longer functional. For many of them, they don't have an electronic device. So the donation today have really helped our students. They helped, helped them to be current with their schoolwork. That has helped them to conduct research. And technology is being integrated in all areas of the curriculum. So it allows linkages to happen across subject areas. So it is really beneficial to our students here at Excelsior High School. Waters says that students have spent the past two years trying to keep up with their lessons with the use of manual school packages. So having a device will no doubt make the learning process that much more convenient. Waters says that since the ministry's Together We Rise education program was introduced this month, there has been an increase in student enrollment. When these students come to us, we have the responsibility to try and reform them in somehow and provide them with the moral and the values necessary for them to become productive citizens. So it transfers really to safer communities because if we have these kids off the street, enrolled in school and give them a positive outcome, a positive outlet to gain activity, abilities, skills, values, morals, then that will give them an option to perhaps go and further their studies or to be functional at, a, at employment. As for the program, Minister Francis Fonseca said that by next year, the ministry should be able to make an assessment of its success and to tweak the areas that may need it. Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. At the start of the school year, parents of children attending St. Mary's Primary School were taken aback when they learned that they needed to make 11th hour arrangements to have their children continue to learn from home instead of attending classes. That's because the structural integrity of the school building and hall were determined to be perilous. The management of St. Mary's has since worked out an arrangement with the Samuel Haynes Institute of Learning on the other side of the city for the children to use their hall as classrooms for the children while they work on replacing the old building. Today, Minister of Education Francis Fonseca shared that the ministry and the government are seeking funds to help the Anglican management to rebuild St. Mary's Primary School. They have found alternative um, uh, an alternative uh, building, as I understand it, on, um, on the south side here of Belize City that they will be using. Um, and we were going to work with um, you know, the, the government 
um, to try to find funds. Ultimately, the, the solution is building a new building for them. Um, so we're working with the Social Investment Fund. We're working um, you know, with the Ministry of Finance to determine how best we can access funds uh, for that purpose. Back in May, we watched a Facebook Live post in dismay as St. Luke Primary School teacher Joanna Isigeri broke down in tears and shared what she felt was sheer stress and unnecessary humiliation that she was forced to work under at the hands of the school's management. Her post quickly won the empathy of the masses and the Ministry of Education and the Belize National Teachers Union intervened and investigated. But while students are back in school, Isigeri has been relegated to sit under a shed on the compound. Another revelation is that the teacher was put to teach Standard 3 students when her teacher's license qualifies her to teach only up to Standard 1. She has sought legal counsel and has, through her attorney, written to the school to return the teacher to the classroom and to place her within a classroom that is in conformity with her teaching license. Today, Minister of Education Francis Fonseca informed that while, that, while that is the case, the ministry is still engaged with the administration of the school to determine how best to move forward with that matter. The September celebrations of this year return to normalcy, or is close to what it was in pre-COVID times, and the Minister of Culture believes that Belizeans embraced it well. Minister Francis Fonseca told reporters today that he is pleased with how everything celebrations related went. We saw large, large crowds at every event. Um, so I think people were waiting to, to burst out uh, after two years of being locked up um, and not, having, not being able to participate in these September activities. Um, so we saw huge crowds everywhere. Um, you know, I can tell you, for example, with the Panyard, we had... Um, Originally, we printed about 800 tickets, um, and it, that sold out in like 48 hours. Uh, we had to print another 400 tickets. Um, so people were, were eager to, to participate. And I think across the country, um, you know, the, we had great success with our mural project, um, great success, I think, with the UB State of the Nation forum panel discussion. Um, you know, the awards, the, we, we recognize some outstanding Belizeans like Pen Cayetano and Brother David. Um, so I think overall, um, as the chairman of the National September Celebra uh, Celebrations Commission, um, I feel very, very satisfied um, that, you know, everything went well. Um, and we're grateful that, you know, the, the, there were not many incidents. After the break, the challenge of the census is finding people at home. We'll have that and more when we come back. Good evening, Belize, from the National Meteorological Service with your forecast for tonight, Wednesday, September 28th. I am Ronald Gordon. After a relatively quiet night and early morning, a few showers and thunderstorms developed over most areas of the country this afternoon. You can see from our latest radar imagery, showers affecting down south in Monkey River, Placencia, Dangriga, and also coastal areas such as Belize City, even extending far north up to San Pedro. You can also see showers affecting inland portions of the country. So what can we expect going forward to tonight? Some showers and thunderstorms will continue, especially over coastal and offshore areas of the country, and then spread to southern and offshore areas early tomorrow morning. In terms of our temperatures tonight, if you're in the capital city, you will see lows of about 73 Fahrenheit, 72 in San Ignacio. Also in Orange Walk, your lows will be in the low 70s, including Orange Walk and Corozal. If you're along coastal areas, you can expect your low temperatures in the upper 70s, 78 in Belize City, 79 in San Pedro, but down south, it will be relatively cooler with about 76 in Placencia and also in Punta Gorda Town. In terms of the forecast for tomorrow, Thursday, a few cloudy intervals will persist across the country, but you will see some sunny breaks as well. But if you're in the south, in Dangriga, Placencia, and Punta Gorda, you may see some light showers persisting tomorrow. In terms of those temperatures, you can expect highs of about 93 Fahrenheit in Belmopan, 94 in San Ignacio. If you're along coastal areas such as San Pedro, your highs will be at about 88 Fahrenheit, 89 in Belize City, and about 86 in Dangriga. 
Down south, where we expect more cloudier conditions, your high temperatures will only, only go to about 85 Fahrenheit in Placencia and also down in Punta Gorda. For the next four days, tomorrow, Thursday, there'll be a few light showers persisting mostly over southern coastal parts of the country. Those will decrease by Friday, and by Saturday and Sunday, we expect generally fair conditions. So if you're planning your outdoor activities, you are likely to see fair weather going into the weekend. In terms of the tropics, we continue to see powerful Hurricane Ian near Florida that made landfall this morning. The system was a category four hurricane at landfall, producing catastrophic winds and storm surge over that area. Also extending from Ian, there is a trough of low pressure affecting the Northwestern Caribbean Sea down to the Belize area. This is the system responsible for the showers and thunderstorms currently affecting the country. Further to the east, newly formed tropical depression number 11 is expected to become a short-lived tropical storm and then dissipate without affecting any land area. In terms of our marine forecast, tonight we can see winds from out of the west and northwest at 5 to 15 knots, light chop sea conditions and waves of 2 to 4 feet. Your waves will increase to about 3 to 5 feet tomorrow with sea conditions becoming choppy. In terms of our astronomical conditions, there will be a low tide at 6.24 tomorrow morning, a high at 12.34, another low at 5.59 tomorrow evening, and a high at 11.51 tomorrow night. Sunrise tomorrow morning will be at 5.42, and the sun will set exactly 12 hours later at 5.42 in the evening. The moon will rise at 4 minutes after 9 tomorrow morning, and set at 8.35 tomorrow night. And that's it folks, from the National Meteorological Service, I am Ronald Gordon. Join us again on Friday for your next weather report and forecast. Have a pleasant and enjoyable evening. Applying for a Social Security Sickness Benefit? Here's what you need to know. A complete claims package include, one, sickness claim form fully completed by the claimant and medical doctor. Two, salaries record form completed by the employer or HR representative. Three, proof of bank account such as bank book, online banking, or statement displaying your name and account number. To submit via email, you need to Take a clear photo or scan of the documents and email to claims at socialsecurity.org.bz. Be sure to include your full name, social security number, and benefit type in the subject line of the email. Deadline to submit is 14 days from your first day of illness. All forms are available on the website at www.socialsecurity.org.bz. Social Security Board, safeguarding you, your family, your future. Beautiful Belize, my land of the free, my home and it's bound by the Caribbean Sea. Valiant and bold, proud we are strong, Belize we rebound at age 41. Belize we are free and independent, we're free and independent, free and independent, to be whatever Changing our country, we're free. So make we celebrate with smart. Come celebrate with smart. Make we celebrate with smart. Let's celebrate.
with smart. So make we celebrate with smart. Come celebrate with smart. Make we celebrate with smart. Let's celebrate with smart. The entire Smart family wishes all Belizeans a safe and happy September celebration. Smart, bringing people together. EEG machines are used to test the electrical activity in the brain using small metal discs that are attached to the skull. Through the years, diagnostic te technology has been commonly used to identify persons suffering from epilepsy or other seizure disorders. But as times evolve, this century-old technology has become more compact and powerful and diverse in its ability to diagnose in variety, a variety of brain disorders. In Belize, there are only four certified neurologists that know how to read the data gathered from these tests. One such neurologist is Dr. Andre Cervantes. He works at the Belize International Institute for Neuroscience, BIN, in Belize City. News 5's Paul Lopez visited BIN to find out more about Dr. Cervantes' work. Here's that report. The brain is the most complex organ in the human body. It controls our thoughts, memories, motor skills, and every single process that regulates our body. Over at the Belize International Institute of Neuroscience in University Heights, Dr. Andres Cervantes is using electroencephalogram technology on his patients to test the functionability of their brains. The EEG machine, it is a technology that has existed for many, many years, but the modern version, the digital form of it, is that it is a machine that measures brain waves so it will test the different types of waves, which is electricity, that's produced on the surface of the brain in the different areas, left, right side, um, front, back, and the communication they have within regions. So in a nutshell, that is testing the functionality of the brain. X-rays, ultrasounds, CAT scans, and MRI scans show the physical makeup of the skull and tissues around the head or inside the head. Ben's diagnostic technology actually unlocks information from inside the brain to explain the conditions that patients are battling with. An example, we're looking to buy a car. So we look at the car, we look at it on the outside, look at the tires, we look at the hood, we look under the hood to see if anything looks like you know, it's disconnected, is the engine clean, we open the car door, we sit down inside, how's the door open? Right? Um, what else am I going to do? Look at the dashboard to see how many miles or kilometers it has run. That is what basically X-rays, CAT scans, ultrasound, and MRIs do. Now, if you want to know how it functions, that's what an EEG does. You have to start the car, and you have to listen to the sound. How does it start up? Is it struggling? Does it turn on immediately? Do I have to gas it? And then. If you're looking to get that vehicle, that car, you want to test drive. So it's not the same thing test driving for five minutes, you take a little drive, than if you test maybe 20 minutes. In other words, the EEG is like when uh, those guys take a sensor to see how the computer of a car is working. So what we're testing for, depending on the needs of the patient, is to see how the brain is functioning. Dr. Cervantes, the medical director at the Institute, explains that this procedure can be helpful to anyone affected by amnesia, insomnia, depression, autism, unexplained migraines, epilepsy, and any changes in one's capacity to think. It could be that you get up one day and you say, I am not myself, something is wrong, I've been feeling like this for the past days, weeks, months, I cannot pinpoint, I've been to my doctor, and you know, it's like my doctor is very good and I always go to him or her, but they kind of dispel me, but something is wrong. Can you call in and get an appointment to get one of these tests done? Definitely, even if it's the basic uh, type of, of EEG, because it at least will give you a glimpse inside the brain. So you don't have to have a condition per se. In fact, there are places that EEGs are done like to see if members of a team, a professional athletic team, or people that have to think a lot, are they functioning well? Um, executives in a company, how are they working? 
are they fine is something like they're not themselves do they have a little bit of brain fog mm -hmm. you know it's not like they're a little bit slightly confused but you're pushing it off no man i don't have anything you know x could fix this i wait for friday and then you end up having little glitches at work and then you know your supervisor is a bit not content with you. According to Dr. Cervantes, by partnering with its board certified EEG neurologist in the U.S. to analyze the collected data, BIN eliminates any margin of error. World-renowned neurologist Dr. Phil Kennedy is one of those board certified EEG neurologists. In the late 90s, Dr. Kennedy made global headlines for implanting several wire electrodes in the brain of a mute, paralyzed man, and then teaching the locked-in patient to control a computer cursor with his mind. He spoke with us briefly via Zoom about his work and partnership with Ben. I've done several things, but my latest, I guess, is to do the brain-computer interfacing. Um, and we're specifically focusing on speech, on restoring speech to people who are locked in that is they're totally paralyzed they can't speak but they're still in there they're aware of what's going on and they need to speech as one of them told me to make them feel human again you asked me about uh don cervantes well you know he's he's worked um he worked on one patient uh uh back a few years ago and he also implanted me in my um my brain with several electrodes and with all that data, um, we've been able to decode speech. In other words, understand how the neural signals that we record from, um, from the part of the speech area just here above your ear, that area controls my mouth, my tongue, my movement. So it actually controls how I produce speech. The EEG procedure is non-invasive and completely painless. The basic test lasts for approximately 30 minutes, but based on the need of the patient, Ben may require longer sampling of brain recordings, which can last from 60 minutes up to three hours. Usually people go to get a study or to get a treatment at a medical facility. And many times, even if you know people are friendly and people are service oriented, um, there's not that spa experience. We have made it a spa experience to make it very comfortable, whether you've come for a study to get a diagnosis, something answered, or you've come to get a treatment to correct something that is not well with your brain. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez. The 2022 census was launched earlier this year and since May, the Statistical Institute of Belize data collectors have been, have been deployed across the country to gather pertinent information from all households. Today, Acting Census and Survey Manager Tanisha Chavaria gave the media an update on the process, saying that they have already wrapped up in certain areas of the country. Data collection is still ongoing in some regions in the country, uh, particularly in Belize, the Belize District, San Pedro, and Stan Creek, and in the city of Belmopan. The other regions, they have already wrapped up data collection, though data collection did get extended in these areas as well. This is mainly due to the challenges that the SIB has been experiencing with staffing, and that is having enough staff to be, complete the data collection in the anticipated 10 weeks time, and also due to dropouts that we have been experiencing. Nevertheless, we have completed data collection in Corozal, Orange Walk, uh, San Ignacio and surrounding areas, as well as Toledo. The deadline to wrap up data collection for Stan Creek, San Pedro and Belmopan is at the end of October and in Belize City, where the most challenge is with staffing, that is expected to conclude by mid-November. After collection, the data will be processed and verified and preliminary results will be released by June 2023. But there are many who claim that they have not been engaged so far by data collectors. Now, in terms of population density, Belize District, specifically the city, has the largest population. And while Tanisha Chavaria says that households have generally been cooperative, there have been challenges with finding persons at home. Generally, there has been a very good reception 
of the households that we have identified in all the buildings, our response rates looks at around 93% of households answering. The main challenge that we have is finding persons at home. So when the interviewers, they, they usually work in small geographical areas called enumeration districts and then they move to another area. Um, while they are out in the field, persons might not be at home. They may be at work or they're traveling. And so to tackle that, the interviewers, they try to go after five or six in the afternoon and especially on the weekends or public and bank holidays. However, um, well, that has uh, helped with the response rates, but we're still not finding many persons at home. For households that perhaps they saw their neighbor got enumerated or they have heard of interviewers uh, collecting data in their area, uh, they would call the SIB. So you could call the SIB and the SIB would relay that message to our regional census coordinators who would make that visit to your household. So if you're interested and you perhaps want to make an appointment with an interviewer, you can contact us and we will set that up for you. Earlier this year, we reported on the death of a child who ingested a pesticide in the north, as well as a case of water system in the south being contaminated with a pesticide. This week, however, is being recognized as Pesticide Awareness Week, and the focus this year is responsible pesticide management for sustainable food system. The theme is pesticides are harmful to our health and the environment. Reduce the use of highly hazardous pesticides. In Belize, these types of pesticides are still widely used in agriculture. Registrar of the Pesticides Control Board in Belize, Miriam Ochayeta Serrat, says that this is a global concern. The World Health Organization has listed HHPs as one of 10 chemicals or groups of chemicals of major public health concern. The CGPC and the Belize Pesticides Control Board joins the global community of pesticide regulators and international organizations to bring awareness of the health and environmental issues associated with HHPs. Concerted action is needed on this group of pesticides that is causing most acute and chronic toxic problems. At the international level, a global action plan is being developed with the main goal of eliminating the harm posed by HHPs and to achieve HHP-free food production, including encouraging and supporting stakeholders' initiatives to drastically reduce HHP use in agriculture by 2030. In Belize, the Pesticides Control Board, under the auspices of its Grow Safe campaign, is collaborating with its strategic partners to reduce reliance on HHPs by promoting the adoption of agroecologically based approaches and alternatives for the sustainable intensification of agricultural production. Reducing reliance on highly hazardous pesticides and adopting sustainable pest control strategies contribute to healthy ecosystems that produce more prevent or maintain pests and diseases at acceptable levels and are more resilient to climate change shocks. When we return, students gravitate to Anne-Marie's book on women in politics. Excited, you know, because I never thought I would ever own something of my own, and now it feels really good because you now I have a place for my baby and where we can stay and we can be independent. So I'm really happy and I'm really grateful for this opportunity. It's a dream come true. I mean, I worked at a bank, I assisted people getting mortgages, and I didn't qualify to get a home of my own. I wanted to get a mortgage to better my life for my children, but I wasn't able to. Um, so I see this as a big opportunity, especially for single mothers, to be able to own their own home and eventually expand it. It's unbelievable. I'm so grateful. And right now I'm very excited, overwhelmed. Words cannot explain how I feel. I'm very grateful, very grateful. Well, first of all, I want to thank God for this opportunity 
that he has given unto me, and I thank my ear, Honorable Juno Sespat, and the government of Belize, you know, for doing their best. I can see they are working. I can't complain about this structure that I've received today, so I'm very proud about it, and thanks to the Ministry of Mesh ID, and I can't complain about this, and I feel proud. My kids feel so happy. She wants to come inside, but this one is what I tell her, she, she got to wait, so she got the privilege to come in the house now, so she is good, so happy. I feel proud, and thanks to the Father God that I'm still here, I'm looking out for my kids. I'm feeling very excited, super happy, and very blessed to have had this opportunity. Me and my mother, you know, we've had our own house, yes, but it, it's old, it's, it's been there for years, and She's always been praying for a little house for her, you know. She's wanted this, we've wanted this. So I am very grateful and very thankful that they were able to do this for us. Reina is one of the youngest, uh, recently graduated, by the way, from uh, Baptist High School. Uh, so she, she, she has ambition. Uh, and so we are trying to do our best to help them to, to have a solid foundation and uh, to be able to build from there and better their lives. One of the young ladies that, that, that we handed a house up today also had some domestic problems and so we are finding ways to help them to become independent and once they become independent and having shelter above their head is one of the steps towards independence then they, 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 they can plot their own future and that's the dream and I think that's what we are assisting in and we will continue doing so. must come to an end. A much needed vacation, or even a good book. What about the world? How will it end? Should we be worried about the end? Frightened even? What does the Bible actually say about the end? Tune in right here as we discuss the end. Bound by the Caribbean Sea Valiant and bold Proud we are strong Believes we rebound at age 41 Believes we are free and independent We're free and independent Free and independent To be whatever you want to be Free and independent We're free and independent Free and independent We're changing our country We're free So make we celebrate with smart Come celebrate with we celebrate with smart. Let's celebrate with smart. So make we celebrate with smart. Come celebrate with smart. Make we celebrate with smart. Let's celebrate with smart. The entire smart family wishes all Belizeans a safe and happy September celebration. Smart, bringing people together. She's long to move on from news reporting, the National Women's Commission, and politics. In fact, Anne-Marie Williams lives in Guyana, where she holds the post of Deputy Program Manager for Gender and Development at the CARICOM Secretariat. But she still has that drive to promote the advancement of women. And one of the arenas where women have been profoundly cast aside and even denigrated is that of politics. But through her book, Political Woman in Red and Blue, published in December of 2021, she hopes to make the playing field more even. The book features 11 Belizean women who have managed to be elected and who have served or are still serving in Parliament. Today, Anne-Marie took the concept of her book to high school students who gathered at the Leo Bradley Library in Belize City. Marion Alley reports. Today, the Leo Bradley Library on Princess Margaret Drive was abuzz with students filing in and out in one-hour sessions. 
They were attending a presentation by Anne-Marie Williams, author of the book, Political Women in Red and Blue. Through an invitation from the Belize National Library, Williams shared highlights of the book and what inspired its writing with the students who attend schools in the neighborhood. She explained why this was a golden opportunity. Women have made sterling contributions to Belize's development, particularly women who have served at the highest level of government in cabinet. And you cannot pick up any one book to comprehensively look at women's stories. Not only their biographical listings, but what are the pieces of legislation that they're responsible for? How they have affected the lives and circumstances of our men and our children? How have they really changed beliefs? The answers to these questions lie in the pages of this book, which features the contributions of 11 Belizean women parliamentarians, from the late Jean Usher to the current Minister Dolores Balramos Garcia and Albert A. Representative Tracy Tager. There are a total of 11 women whose profiles occupy the pages of the book. And if we are to go by the feedback we got from Fourth Farm students from Palotti, the book will have to be amended to include more. It helps inspire us as, you know, teenagers that will eventually become the future for Belize. And I feel like it is needed because, as Miss Williams rightly said, as females, women, we get um, overlooked at, you know, because men are the ones that they, you know, put the eye on, get more experience, get more opportunities than females. And I feel like we do have the brains. I'm a little bit more interested in the field of law but I do wish to maybe even become the first female prime minister one of these days. So this was a very, very amazing experience for me. I'm so thankful to Miss Anne-Marie for bringing up about women, women in politics and women empowerment. It is a great thing, especially for Palatines, as we are all female. So the encouragement is very, very necessary. Women are capable of doing so much things and way better than men sometimes. <laughs> Not to say like that. But um, I know we can all do something. We are capable of big things. And I am excited to see what the future holds for all these upcoming um, females. Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. The book sells for $40 a copy and can be purchased from Anne-Marie through contact with her on Facebook. Just ahead, the importance of media literacy in the digital age. Taking its name from the venerable father of the nation, the George Price Highway stretches 77 miles from Belize City to Benque Viejo. Originally built in the 1930s, this cross-country highway system is the artery that links Belize to Central America at the western border with Guatemala. That connection facilitates overland trade, supporting Belize's economic development. Winding its way across the scenic countryside, the George Price Highway, from Roaring Creek to Esperanza, has been fully reconstructed to meet international standards, with particular emphasis on road safety. A shorter and hassle-free commute is best enjoyed when everyone obeys the traffic laws. To reduce the number and frequency of road traffic accidents, it means that a seatbelt must be worn at all times, and the speed limit observed when traveling along the highway. It also means that pedestrians must use sidewalks and crosswalks where available. Buses should only board and discharge passengers at a designated bus stop. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. It begins with you. Hola, usuario de eCash. La aplicación eCash está disponible en español. Cambiar el idioma de tu aplicación de eCash de inglés a español es rápido y sencillo. Deja mostrarte cómo se hace. Primero, abre tu aplicación eCash. Introduce tu PIN. Toca el icono More en la parte inferior de tu pantalla. Selecciona Security. Selecciona Language. Y luego selecciona Spanish. Vuelve a introducir tu PIN y ya está. Tu aplicación de eCash está ahora en español y puedes seguir disfrutando de tu cartera digital eCash. La aplicación eCash de Belize Bank te hace la vida más fácil. En 2018, diagnosed with um, cervical 4A, stage 4A cancer. First it was a, a size of a grapefruit that what the um, doctor told me. The kidney got enlarged. I couldn't do any um, chemotherapy because of the kidney. So I had to do only radiation. 
and I did my first session of 25 and then when when I finished with the 25 um, sessions I went back she check it and she saw four centimeters and I went back for the next 10 days and after that when she check it again she said, oh, it's like nothing like nothing is there it wasn't painful but it's just a, it's a machine that you go under and they have like a big like a circular and that goes five times you will take five minutes five minutes to do the radiation one session then you go back the next morning another session well i personally will highly recommend galenia hospital because of its good services friendly staff the doctors very caring well, I just want to thank them for everything that they have done for me, you know, the, the, the staff and the doctor, especially Dr. Jamie, because she was my doctor for the radiation. No? Dwayne Moody, Isani Cayetano, Marion Alley, Paul Lopez. Your News 5 police teams do whatever it takes, go wherever they need to go, so you can catch the story wherever you are, whenever you want, on whatever device. Channel 5 believes on television, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, because news is now everywhere, all the time, and so are we. Everyone, including our elderly, needs to stay connected with their loved ones. With SMART's Golden Citizen Broadband Program, senior citizens can sign up for 10 megabytes of unlimited internet at a low monthly cost of $25. Citizens over 65 can sign up with a valid ID and receive free installation plus one month free on selected broadband plans. Visit a Smart Showroom near you for more information on how you can enjoy Smart's Golden Citizen Broadband Program. Smart, bringing people together. Hurricane Ian picked up strength overnight off the coast of West Florida. It made landfall near Cayo Costa, Florida this morning as a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour. A number of communities southwest of the coast, including Fort Myers Beach, Cape Coral and Nepals have been inundated with up to six feet of flood water. Footage from the Weather Channel shows heavy rainfall, roadways completely submerged, and strong winds in Fort Myers Beach, one of the areas affected by the eye of the Hurricane Ian. This evening, Hurricane Ian was moving north, northeast, as it heads towards Jacksonville on the east coast. We spoke briefly via Zoom with a Belizean student who is currently in Jacksonville. We're following the news right now, and we've heard that it's actually a Category 5 hurricane. And you know from past Belizeans and stories that we've heard that Arjun had so that's what we're trying to um, be prepared for at the moment. We've uh, been notified that it's supposed to impact around tomorrow. So we're just trying to get the last bit of everything prepared for the hurricane that's going to hit tomorrow. You know, as Belizeans, we have to, you know, um, that what we were taught in school, get those batteries ready, flashlight, you know, radar and everything. And the extra little thing that will, you know, make us feel at home, you know, and rice. For the little rice and beans that you want to cook, you know? <laughs> so just a little stuff like that. We're trying to get everything together. And Florida, you know, is, they have a lot of water, a lot of huge bodies of water. So like, as you can see right behind me, there's a huge um, river that actually comes through Jacksonville. So the best advice that we've been told is to get on high ground. So that's what we're doing at the moment. In Cuba, millions are left without electricity after Hurricane Ian made landfall there on Tuesday. With heavy rains and winds of up to two of up to 125 miles per hour, two persons have been reported dead as a result of the hurricane. According to reports, one man was electrocuted as he tried to disconnect a wind turbine that he used to irrigate his field. Reports are that the second victim, a 43-year-old woman, died when one of the walls of her house collapsed. 
This afternoon at Anglican Cathedral College, students participated in a skit depicting the harmful effects of spreading fake news, libel and slander, as well as maligning other individuals in the media. It was part of a media literacy session that was spearheaded by Peace Work Belize and the United States Embassy. News 5's Isani Cayetano reports. Have you ever wondered how much of the media you consume is factual? With so much of our time taken up by different forms of media, we need to make sure that we are consuming it wisely. We are targeting high school students because you know that these students are on different um, social media platforms. And many times when students see these messages on social media, they sometimes just read and they like it because it's negative. What we want to instill in them is that they must question things, stop just accepting, questioning, question things. Who wrote that message? Why was that message written? What was their intention? And so we are teaching them to be responsible consumers of information, of media. The ability to access and analyze media messages, as well as create, reflect, and take action, using the power of information and communication to make a difference in the world, is known as media literacy. We all know that Belize is faced with this pervasive uh, situation where the use of social media has become uh, reckless and, 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 and indiscriminate. People are using the, 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 these media outlets to, to commit cyber crimes, um, putting fake news out there, spreading misinformation, disinformation and malinformation and in so doing it has become uh, infodemic as some person uh, coined it. Um, what we want to do is to help young Belizeans, starting with students of ACC, to tackle this infodemic head-on um, using media literate tactics. The broadcasting of inaccurate, harmful information intended to cause injury to one's reputation is unlawful. Back in January, Cabinet gave its approval for the introduction of legislation that would repeal and replace the Libel and Defamation Act. That piece of law was last revised in 2000. Since then, other platforms, including social media, have been introduced that are now being used to spread false and malicious information. This is something for you to take serious, it's not a joke. It's going to harm somebody, physically, mentally, and emotionally, because it's going for a long way. When you look at the idea of using information perhaps as a tool to damage someone's character or reputation, you realize how important information is and how you use it. What are some of the lessons you've learned from today's skit? Sir, you, like, especially because I'm in this, sir, I would be like, sir, at least for some early reporters not know, I'm not sure no shit, right? But at least try looking at anything before you publish it, because the person, my friend, when I play this, sir, where he said that harm he reputation, uh, people not just see after that, even though they said I'm a false news, sir, that still will follow he wrong. Through Peace Work Belize, Dr. Carl Bob, with support from the United States Embassy, was able to share with students of ACC the fundamentals of media literacy. I learned that posting what we are post on the social media, sir, because you know when I delete it, you know really delete, sir. Because they have people where well, like what bad man in there screenshot it, Photoshop. So you yeah, just need to watch your posts and watch your talk for social media, sir. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Kayetano. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available in both text and streaming video at channel5police.com. You can also connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news5 live. Thanks for joining us and from all of us here at News 5, Please remember to wash your hands, keep your social distance, and stay safe. Good night.